Have you ever known somebody who's had a total knee or total hip replacement and walked away several weeks later saying, I had a minor procedure done? Well, here at Mile Bluff Medical Center, that is the norm. And we're gonna find out a little bit more about some of the awesome outcomes that are coming out of the orthopedic surgery department here at Mile Bluff Medical Center. And my guests will include Dr. John Horan, orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Michael Wolf, Director of Anesthesia Services, and Sharice Vossen, Director of the Surgery Department. From the Mile Bluff Medical Center here in Mauston, I'm Justin Riley, and this is Wisconsin Doctors. Welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We're here at Mile Bluff Medical Center. We're talking a little bit about orthopedics, about surgery, and some very positive outcomes that are happening here. And I have a great team of panelists, including Dr. John Horan, Dr. Mike Wolf, and Sharice Vossen. How are you guys? Great. Good to have you with us here today. I just realized we have a first timer, a second timer, and a third timer. <laughs> So there we go, we got a, a good variety of experience. So Dr. Han, I wanna start with you a little bit here. Um, you know, in, in talking about orthopedic surgery, a lot of times, you know, we're, we're talking about total knee or total hip replacement. How does a person really know whether or not they need total hip or total knee replacement? Well, the strict criteria for that would be pain from an arthritic hip or knee that has failed all conservative care mm -hmm. and limits their, need, their necessary activities of daily living and wakes them from sleep. Having said that, there's a lot of people who will put up with that a lot longer mm -hmm. than just that criteria. Uh, in our office, we'll do cortisone injections, we'll do some physical therapies, um, you know, trying to buy them as much time as they want or need. Uh, but when the time comes where those are unsuccessful, uh, then it's time to start talking about something more aggressive. Absolutely, and just to kind of follow up on that, you mentioned uh, people often put up with that longer than they probably should. Is there damage that can be caused for, from people who don't seek uh, a surgical option as soon as they should? You'd have to go a very, very long time okay. before you got to a point where it couldn't be fixed. Okay. Um, uh, most people won't put up with it that long. Sure, sure, absolutely. Sharice, uh, I'm wondering, since you're kind of new here on the show anyway, uh, can you give us just a brief synopsis of what your role here is at My Bluff? Well, I have um, been at My Bluff for 33 years, right. actually. So not a newbie not here a at Not a newbie Mile here at My Bluff, <laughs> but actually um, here in new kind of my position in new to this, to this um, filming. Okay, right. Um, so my new position, as a panelist. There you go. <laughs> So my position is as the director of the surgery department, okay. and I manage the day-to-day -day activities of the department. Um, as an organization here at Mile Bluff, we have three focuses that we really look towards. We want to look towards quality mm -hmm. and um, our patient experience as well as our employees. So that's kind of my role in a nutshell is to pay attention to those three areas. And, and you're kind of, oh, when you talk about patients and employees, you're kind of overseeing both of those exactly. things. Very exactly, exactly. Nice. Very yes. nice. Uh, so Mike, you're the anesthesiologist of the group. Can you believe it? I said that right the first time. Uh, what part do you play uh, in the role of orthopedic surgery? And in general, what is the role of, the, of anesthesia when it comes to surgery and then also for pain management? Well, first of all, it's to meet with the patient. Mm -hmm. uh, try to put all the data together. Typically, Dr. Horan has already conversation with us. We get information from the primary care providers. We put that together in, in trying to uh, place a, a plan of care that is very specific to the patient um, and make that a really good experience for them that really has to be individualized based on their comorbid states, the medications that they're taking, mm -hmm. the experience they previously had with the anesthesia. So putting that together for an anesthetic plan uh, goes a long way in helping educate the patient and then two in and also providing the pain control after that individualized care does include a, a, a pain control measures for the post-operative period. That's comforting for people to know that they're going to have that support after they have their mm -hmm. surgery too mm -hmm. because I think that 
you know, for me, thinking about, you know, I've never had to undergo surgery, thankfully, yet. But if I was to, I think one of the things that I'd be the most afraid of is not what's it going to be like during, because I'm not going to know. I'll be knocked out probably. But, but what's it going to feel like afterwards? And to know that there's measures there and there's support there for them to make sure that they're as comfortable as they possibly can be afterwards, I think that's, that's very important. So uh, we have just a few seconds left, but I'm wondering if you can, uh, you guys have a really phenomenal program called Joint Camp here, which helps prepare people for orthopedic surgery. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? It, it's a combination effort. Uh, we, we have many services that, that provide a little bit of education for the patients. Physical therapy participates, um, acute care where the patients will actually be staying. Pharmacy plays a role. Mm -hmm. Social services plays an important role as to where they're going to where they're going to go after care, um, and helping the patients kind of decide that course. And then we, as the anesthesia department, are also involved in helping determine that case. So that combination is a couple hour long uh, event for mm -hmm. the patients where they're educated about the process, mm -hmm. trying to alleviate the anxiety that they might have regarding that. They've already decided they want surgery. It's right. the rest of the part that we're trying to inform them about. Absolutely, and it sounds like here at My Bluff, it's sort of an all hands on deck type of thing as far as the different departments that are involved. They all kind of get involved, which is awesome. We gotta take a short break. I actually have a follow up question to that, but we gotta take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna talk more about orthopedics and surgery here at Mile Bluff Medical Center. Don't go away. back here at Mile Bluff Medical Center for our show Wisconsin Doctors today and we're talking a little bit about orthopedics, surgery, and some of the really positive outcomes that are coming out of this hospital. And Mike, one thing that I wanted to uh, to touch base with you about is, is you wanted to make sure to, to emphasize how vitally important it is for patients to work cooperatively with the staff here. You want to expand on that a little bit? Well, there's, uh, there's effort that comes certainly from the facility. Right. But, uh, part of that Part of that effort needs to be in educating the patients, mm -hmm. educating them well in advance of surgery about potential risks, mm -hmm. how those risks mm -hmm. can be minimized. Um, we have we have the ability here with uh, with outreach clinics, with the primary care right here within the facility to be able to help help that patient become a better candidate for the surgical experience. They just need to know what those things are. So helping educate them. So by the time they hit the joint camp, they already have right. an understanding. They're already the best possible candidate for Dr. Horan to do the procedure. Mm -hmm. We're looking for great outcome. Right. And mm -hmm. getting great outcome involves the team here, but it also involves the patient. So when right. we can get that patient and family members involved, right. outcome improves. Absolutely. And, and Charisse, before the show, we talked a little bit about how you uh, sometimes have to implement hard stop criteria uh, for elective joint replacement surgery. What does that mean, hard stop criteria? So hard stop criteria to me are sometimes hard conversations to, okay. that are had with family, friends, and um, neighbors. Yeah. Uh, we've had engagement from our medical staff and Dr. Haran and anesthesia, in which we need to look at what to go into these elective surgical procedures, what I mean by elective is it's chosen by the patient that we're at a time when we have to have my hip replaced or my knee re replaced, that we are electively going to do surgery, but boy, I need to make sure I'm in the best health possible as a patient. So hard stops, hard discussions might be, am I a smoker? If I'm a smoker, I need to have stopped within six to eight weeks before surgery mm -hmm. so that I can ensure that I'm going to breathe well during surgery, minimize the complications right. of surgical site infections or pneumonia or other complications. Right. Another hard stop is weight. And that's a hard conversation to have. Yeah. You know, um, am I of a BMI or a basic uh, weight that I can mm -hmm. handle my implants or right. those joints that I'm going to have? So we, we have conversations and we can involve dietitians to help out with, with helping a patient in those respects. Blood sugar management, mm -hmm. again, we want to make sure that that patient has their diabetes under control and that might be monitoring either their blood glu glucose or their A1C levels. And we have to have some strict criteria, again, an infected joint because of a blood sugar being too high during surgery mm -hmm. causes a major complication. Yeah and not a good outcome for the patient. And one final, and this makes kind of um, 
you, it, it makes sense is the, the dental status of the yeah. patient. Yeah. We want to make sure that your teeth, which can harbor bacteria and send infections throughout the bloodstream, we want to make sure that they're either dental work is being addressed or haven't taken care of prior to the surgical experience. So That's so amazing that so many people even nowadays, I think, don't think about how important mm -hmm. dental health is right. to your overall health mm -hmm. because if you're the bacteria build up and mm -hmm. you're ingesting that on a regular basis, that can cause some huge problems. So. Um, so, Mike, obviously being in charge of anesthesia, uh, you'll see the, the patient on surgery day, but you also meet with the patients prior to the operation. We talked a little bit about what you do, but can you kind of expand on some of the things that you're hoping to accomplish with that pre-surgery meeting that you have with the patients? We do the anesthesia consult typically at the joint camp, and okay. that primarily is to relieve anxiety, sure. give the patient a plan, help them understand you know, what is the, the best risk for procedure. Mm -hmm. Um, and formulate a plan. I mean, there's options available. We typically, during joint replacement, are using regional anesthesia. It's the most effective, mm -hmm. it's probably the safest, mm -hmm. it lowers risk. When patients, we know that they can tolerate that, that's typically how we proceed. It's not to say we have to do it that way, but it's education, educating the patients to that point. Sometimes they're incredibly anxious about anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Right. They know they're going to have surgery and they're, they're okay with that, but right. it's having anesthesia that makes them really nervous. So yeah. coming up with a plan for those patients I think works really well ahead of time. And that plan can be modified, but we go forward with that in cooperation with the patients. Absolutely. we got to take a short break, Dr. Horan. You're not off the hook yet, just yet. Mm -hmm. We come back, we're going to continue talking about some of the great outcomes here at Mile Bluff Medical Center when it comes to orthopedics and surgery. We'll be right back. We're back here in Wisconsin Doctors here at Mile Bluff Medical Center. We're talking about orthopedics, surgery. We're kind of talking a little bit about some pre-op, post-op, and then what to expect during surgery and that sort of thing, and, and some great outcomes that are coming out of Mile Bluff Medical Center. And uh, Dr. Horan, one of the things that, uh, we t that Mike and I talked about is the importance of the patient uh, sort of being at the helm of their own uh, care and recovery and preparation for the surgery. But let's talk a little bit about the role of the patient's family. What role did they play in getting them ready for surgery? Yeah, when everybody talks about, you know, the patient's family and what their role is, everybody immediately goes to the post-op phase, which it, right. I mean, it's very obvious the patient's relatively immobile. They're going to need help with basic, you know, activities of daily life. But before the surgery, they're, they're very, very valuable as well. I mean, the patient's a smoker. They help them with, you know, quit their smoking. Mm -hmm. they, they, if they're diabetic, they, they make sure that they're eating healthy so that they don't have high sugars and get their case canceled. Right. You know, they make, if they're overweight, they help them with their weight loss program. Um, those are all incredibly crucial. And then uh, in preparation of their return home from the hospital or from the rehabilitation center, they need to make sure that they have a clean, and safe environment for the patient to come back to because uh, the patient's environment can be the root of an infection post-operatively. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very critical and you, know, you don't want to have post-operative accidents where somebody falls because there's something laying in the middle of the living room. Right. Yeah, so many things that we don't even really consider if we've never had to go through something like that. They're really good things to think about. Mike, I understand, we're talking a little bit about uh, surgery day itself now. I understand that the patient is brought into the recovery room. There's a recovery room just before the surgery and just after. What is supposed to happen there in the recovery room? Well, in this case, the recovery room is really used as a, as a pre-anesthetic uh, mm -hmm. pre room as well. Um, the pre-anesthesia area, what, what we do there is part and parcel of pain control. Mm -hmm. We are typically utilizing blocks, um, regional anesthetics, uh, with just local anesthesia to minimize pain after surgery. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes these are performed before the surgery starts. It's a little bit easier to manipulate and maneuver. We have the time available to do it before surgery. Right. We get those patients then ready for surgery, typically in the operating room, and then they come back to the they come back to the recovery room uh, once the procedure is done. Let them wake up and monitor pain control, see that they're appropriate to go out to acute care. Absolutely. And uh, Sharice, mm -hmm. one thing that we kind of talked about. Uh, during the break here is that here at Mile Bluff Medical Center, if somebody goes through 
uh, orthopedic surgery or total knee or total hip replacement. What's really great is that a lot of the, the providers will come to you. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? So, um, especially in our joint camp areas, mm -hmm. we have an a, a area in which the patients can um, meet together as mm -hmm. a group of patients, mm -hmm. and then the specialist will come to visit them. The physical therapy will visit them, and as a group, be able to demonstrate the ex exercises and activities that they will go through. Um, social services, and then and then will be able to expound that to an individual level if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, the social services people will come and talk to them mm -hmm. um, and so on and so forth. So they'll meet in a common area and services will come to the patient versus the patient having to go to other directions. Sure, and this happens at joint camp? At joint camp. It kind of starts out there mm -hmm. and if they're, they need uh, uh, additional assistance beyond that, like right. on an individual basis, they can get that. That is correct. That's fantastic. So uh, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about, and I hope we have enough time here in this segment, is it's a little bit of a, a shift of gears, surgical site infections. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the most common of the hospital-acquired uh, infections. We hope it never happens, mm -hmm. but it does happen from time to time. And Maya Bluff is doing some things to really minimize the risk of these types of infections. Can you talk a little bit about that? We have a surgical site infection task force that really looks at Again, trying to minimize and see if we ha can identify what might be the precursor for those surgical site infections. Right. So we drill down, we look in on an individual case basis, we try to look for trends to see if there is something that we can identify and do a plan, do, check, and, and react type of process. Um, but we have just as of the beginning of this year did invite Dr. Edmondson who is um, an expert in the um, public health, Wisconsin public health um, as far as surgical site infection prevention. We asked him to come and do a survey in our organization to see if he could help us to identify areas that we could improve upon or say, yeah, we're doing a good job right. at doing some things. So we um, had that survey and yep. we're going to look at future endeavors that we can do to... Sort of an external audit of, of sorts. Exactly. Uh, and and self-invite inv invitation to him. We yeah. wanted, we brought him on board right. um, because we wanted to do the best we could possibly Absolutely. do for outcomes for our patients. Absolutely. we got to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to kind of wrap this all up into one little package, hopefully, here. We'll be right back here at Mile Bluff Medical Center with more Wisconsin Doctors. Welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We're here at Mile Bluff Medical Center. We've been talking about orthopedics. We've been talking about surgery, typically total knee or total hip replacement. And Dr. Horan, I want to uh, talk a little bit about post-surgery uh, recovery now. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what goes on in the rehabilitation program? Because you guys have a fantastic rehabilitation program here. We actually do. I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, rehabilitation actually starts pre-op. Right. Because the better condition you are coming in, the better condition you'll be going out. That's the so whole purpose of joint camp and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you be in as good a shape as you can coming in. Well, once you've had the surgery, uh, rehabilitation starts on the morning of post-op day number one. Uh, we have our inpatient physical therapists and occupational therapists. Uh, they go into a continuous passive motion machine that bends their knee starting mm -hmm. post-operative day number one. Wow. Um, they're usually in the hospital for a day or two. And then, uh, then when it's time for discharge, depending upon their physical condition, their social environment, how much help they're going to have at home, and uh, and how they did postoperatively, they'll have the option of going directly home with their family and going to outpatient rehabilitation, going home with their family and having a therapist, a visiting therapist, come to them, or going to inpatient rehabilitation, mm -hmm. which we have right here in house. Right. That's very nice to have that, the convenience of having that in-house. So, uh, Mike, once the patient is discharged, obviously they still have a responsibility to be, to, to sort of take charge of their own recovery and their rehabilitation. What are some things that patients are typically asked to do to continue their recovery after discharge? Even before discharge, mm -hmm. the patients are already playing an active role themselves. Right. They, right. they have instructions. We help them with pain control. We continue to stay in contact with them on a daily basis mm -hmm. um, from the anesthesia department as part of a pain control mechanism. 
we help reinforce that with them, educate them as they go home, because mm -hmm. the, the expectation is they will continue to be that active person, will still continue to have some functional pain, and know how to, how to deal with that. So by educating the patients for that, outcomes better. Um, Dr. Horan sees the patients early on after surgery as a follow-up. They stay in touch with the system. And let's talk a little bit about outcomes here. Uh, so, Sharice, a uh, couple of uh, questions for you. Uh, number one, what are the typical recovery times that people are seeing, you know, uh, post-surgery? And then what are the outcomes? What are people seeing? I mean, obviously, hopefully they're, they're seeing a huge improvement. Absolutely. Um, as Just to tailor off what Dr. Haran has said, mm -hmm. it's, Usually it's a one or two overnight stay in the right. hospital, mm -hmm. but recovery um, is only as good as possibly your health going into right. it. So, right. so it, it's it, if you if you say it's individualized, it is individualized recovery. Right. Um, and um, I have heard one of my church going friends claimed that his knee surgery was just something that was a minor surgery, but actually it's a major event for these people. Yes. Um, we have seen brilliant outcomes of of um, successes for the patients and um, people have have raved about the joint camp experience that yeah. they've had and so I can only say that we've had great outcomes by right. verbalizations and right. by testimonies from patients right. um, but actually we've seen um, decrease in surgical site infections, sure, information, yeah. and that kind of thing. So yeah. you're things. kind of you're kind of attacking it from all angles, right. you know, the pre-op and the post-op and everything. And I think that's right. so cool. I think that's a sign of success when mm -hmm. somebody can say, "Oh yeah, I just had my knee replaced." I just had minor no, surgery, no he deal. said, and it's a major <laughs> event for these people. It really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, Mike, you have some contact with the patient. Um, uh, do you have contact with the patient at any point after their surgery? After surgery, typically not. Dr. Horan sees them scheduled as okay. follow-up. Um, when there's any concerns or questions, patients have certainly have the ability to follow up with us, that they're given contact for us um, to be able to follow up. But Dr. Horan typically is, is doing that follow-up as right. a routine. Yep, to make sure that they're on track and they're not going down, they're going up in terms of their recovery. Mm -hmm. So lots of good things there. And just the time we have left, Dr. Horan, anything else you'd like to, to mention? Uh, to go to your question to Charisse, um, Yeah. The typical total knee or total hip patient will go from crutches to crutches or walker to cane at two to four weeks, and from cane to nothing at six to eight weeks. Wow! wow. Thank you. That's a good turnaround time. Mm -hmm. Makes me want to go get my knee replaced. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. We are out of time here today. I appreciate all of the information that you guys have mm -hmm. provided for your time today, and it's always a pleasure uh, to talk with the panel here at Mahabalik Medical Center, so thank you. And that's all the time we have for today on Wisconsin Doctors. From all of us here at Wisconsin's 57 and Mahabalik Medical Center, we invite you to live longer, live better. We'll see you next time. <laughs>